I promised I'm going to be implementing some sort of throttling or debouncing mechanism on um, the navigation bar on our website, right? And I realized I should have done this earlier when I was testing on a slow Android phone. So when I was scrolling through the web page, I've noticed that especially this area when the navigation bar gets redrawn and redrawn all the time as we scroll down, it like it made the scroll scroll animation lag. And in today's stream, we're going to be implementing a debouncer for the navigation bar, and we are going to be implementing a throttle one for the um, resize listener. So, what is throttle and debounce? So, to explain it very shortly, debounce waits for you to stop before firing the action. So, if you're constantly clicking a button or if you are resizing the web page, um, it waits for you to finish resizing the web page or stop clicking the button to fire the event. And throttle um, allows, if you're spamming a button, let's say, if you're clicking it constantly, um, throttle will allow you to um, register the click every five seconds, let's say. No matter how fast you click, only one click will be sent per five seconds. And Or if you're resizing the window, um, the resize function will be triggered, the handle resize function will be triggered um, every five seconds, let's say. So this is the visual representation of the debounce. So I'm going to um, spam this button. And as soon as I stop spamming, you're going to see at the bottom our action got registered as soon as I stopped spamming. These are all my mouse clicks, by the way. Okay. And if this was throttle, you would see lines here, 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 and and then at one, one at the end, maybe. So that's the difference between um, throttle and debounce. And for our navigation bar, we want a throttle event because as the user's scrolling down, we don't want to wait for the user to stop scrolling to change the navigation bar color. So as soon as the user gets past the hero area, the landing area, I want to change the navigation bar color, obviously. So let's say if I'm scrolling like this, I want to change the color constantly, right? This animation runs very smoothly because this is a very powerful laptop. But anyway, um, so I want, I still want to keep it running smoothly, but um, maybe not as smoothly. I don't need to fire this many events. So let's take, let's start by taking a look at how many events I fire when um, when I'm resizing or when I'm scrolling down. So let's go to um, navigation bar. In here, you, you can see I have a handle scroll function in here, which sets the variables. By the way, um, we can make this function a bit more efficient. So actually setting a variable is the same as reading a variable, essentially. I don't need to do this check in here and I don't need to do that check uh, because they take literally the same amount of time reading something from memory and writing something to memory. They're the same thing. They all, they're all one instructions in x86. Anyway, I'm going to add a console lo login here. So you're going to see um, how many times this um, function is called when I'm scrolling down. Handle scroll called. So is the server running? Let's start the server. So I'm going to start scrolling now and watch out for this area. Do you see how many handle scroll events are being called right now? We want to decrease that function. We want to decrease that number. It, this number doesn't have to be this high. We don't need to call it this many times. We don't have to redraw this component this many times, right? Even if like, if we manage to decrease the size, it's, it's going to be imperceivable, imperceptible. You, you won't be able to see it. You won't be able to see the difference if we call this function less than half times maybe. I don't know. Like I'm planning to decrease the number of calls by 80% and we're almost going to get the same effect. We're not, we're barely going to notice it and you have to pay really close attention to see the difference probably. Okay. So what do we need? Um, I have found various solutions for this online. Um, one of them included a library called Lodash. So this library comes with, um, this underscore um, debounce function, but the problem is when I when I put when I um, when I tried using this library, um, it increased my bundle size by about thirty kilobytes, which is quite a lot com um, considering the size of our web page. So I did some um, searching, and some people have created excellent versions of this function for me, like 
um, so many people have been working on how to do this thing actually and like people are still contributing to this and people are still people are still coming up with ideas so I like the version that this guy did it's clean it's easily readable and well um, I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it into one of the um, utils util um, JavaScript files that I have on my website so let's go to constants.utils.jsx hmm instead of this do I have anything else okay maybe not so I'm going to create a new file in here let's call it limiters limiters.jsx and you're gonna paste this one in here and let's export this function so it's readable from the outside let's clean this file up okay so um, the default delay is going to be 250 milliseconds and um, this will this function will ensure that we can call um, handle scroll at most four times per second so one second divided by 250 milliseconds is four that's how I got that number okay so we're going to use that function in here and all we literally all we have to do is just call debounce in here and you're gonna call debounce in here all right now we need to import this function uh, we can let IntelliJ do it for us and if you go back to our website now if I scroll if I stop scrolling you're gonna see um, we call the handle scroll function less times than before but you're gonna notice another pattern now we're calling it several times per scroll that's not the intended behavior is it that's because we are well we're not using the dependency array in um, the use effect hook in here um, I have a whole other video about this so this needs to be empty um, and now you're going to see that we only call this function once yep so as soon as I stop scrolling this function is called but the problem with this is let's see if I'm continuously scrolling when I reach this point the navigation bar as you can still as you can see the background is still transparent and I have to stop scrolling for the event to register so that's one problem right so um, debounce doesn't work for this function we have to go with throttle roots okay so I found this throttle implementation on while browsing the web and I was just looking for it basically and this implementation seemed to work for me so uh, I'm just going to come here and paste this as another function um, I'm going to change this to be a constant export const okay that will probably work and I want to set the default um, limit to 250 milliseconds so it will be called four times a second so we're going to replace debounce with throttle in here and let's import this Oops, is it not exported throttle did I not spell it yep I didn't spell it correctly okay let's import this here and let's come back to the website now as I'm scrolling you're going to see the function is being called and 200 like uh, four times a second is it seems enough like as I'm scrolling down even if I'm scrolling very fast it still manages to catch up and the number of the handle scroll events that we call are much less than before so I think we've achieved we've done the right thing in here and this seems to be running faster on my screen right now like this especially this area is much more responsive than before because we are limiting the number of times we call the handle scroll event okay well there's a little bug in here so as soon as we reach the top it should still be called so can I throttle and also debounce a function maybe <laughs> is this even possible debounce what's this gonna do let's experiment with this a little bit so let's just select this thing um, let's paste it here this might be a very bad idea but let's see so it's it's working as expected now and the handle scroll is called as many times as we want it this works perfectly so the debounce ensures that the function is called at least once and the throttle keeps calling the function every oh yeah this is this is this is literally the perfect behavior so if you want to limit the number of calls that your function receives but also want to ensure that it runs when you stop scrolling or stop the resize event this is the way to go 
So you have to throttle it and also debounce it. See, the bug is fixed. There you go. So, well, yeah, that's possible. You can debounce and also throttle the function at the same time. There you go. So this is the solution that we're going to implement for the navigation bar. Um, let's see where we are using other event listeners. So we want to make sure that we throttle them as well. So I see that we're using it in the landing page. Okay, so this resize event is only called if the device is an iPad, um, but for the purpose of this test, let's just get rid of the iPad flex. Actually, there's a better way to do this. Um, so I can just comment this out for now and I can replace this with true. So it's, well, this will think it's running on an iPad. And if we resize the web page before we do that, actually, let me just add um, a handle, just a console.log in here. So console.log resize cold. So as soon as I resize this window, you're going to see the resize event is called like crazy. This It's it's the same behavior in here. So it's um, as, as I keep resizing this window, the resize event is called so many times that we don't need this to be called that many times, right? Like we could easily get away with 20% of these calls and it would look exactly the same way. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we are going to do the same thing. But this time we don't have to throttle and, de and debounce, we can probably just get away with debouncing because we don't need to keep, um, well, on the iPad, you can't really, de you can't really res resize the screen anyway, but I'm just adding this because I can, and maybe in the future, Apple will add um, the ability to resize windows on an iPad. I don't think so. I, I'm not sure if that will ever be a function on an iPad. We'll see, we'll see. If they add it, our support is there. Anyway, so this event should now fire as soon as I stop resizing. So I'm resizing, it's called once, and if I stop resizing, there you go, it's called again. Um, so this only runs when I stop resizing the web page. Okay, that's the behavior that I wanted to have. Let's revert the changes in this file. All right, um, let's remove our console.logs in here because they're not really necessary in a production build. All right, there you go. So um, this is how you throttle and debounce events in a React application or JavaScript in general. Um, yeah, I hope you found this useful and I will see you on the next one.